You pretty much played three different characters, and then adding this crazy suit on top of everything. How did you perfect that balance? Because that's got to make things even more difficult. Yeah, I mean, but it's also uh, the difficulty was also sort of showing the way to uh, uh, to some of the the characterization of it. Um, like the suit had, uh, it, it was you know difficult. It, it was heavy and uncomfortable, um, and I'd feel a little awkward and naked underneath because I wasn't wearing any clothes. Um, but it was also it sort of made me understand, or it fed the uh, fed my imagination of sort of the vulnerability that Alex would feel without a body, mm. <laughs> even though he his new body was so powerful, and and uh, so that was an interesting contrast. That is really interesting. So these films, even though it was a remake, it was very different. It was told in a very different way. Yeah. How would you say that your Robocop differed from Peter Weller's version? Well, I, you know, I think it, it's completely different. Um, I think the, the big difference um, after he becomes Robocop is that um, in, in our version, uh, Alex doesn't die. He's amputated from his throat down. So when he wakes up, he's completely aware of the situation. Mm -hmm. and, and he has to deal with the realization that he's been amputated from his throat down. And he can't make love to his wife. He can't fully embrace his son. And, um, and he also has uh, artificial intelligence implanted in his brain that is de doing some of his decision making. Um, so so it, I think the whole arc of the character is completely different. Mm -hmm. So the original film obviously was in the 80s where the concept of you know automated warfare and half man, half robot were very far-fetched, but now yeah we're kind of on the brink of this happening. So do yeah. you think that kind of enabled the story to feel more grounded? Yeah, indeed. And I think that was also the reason why Jose wanted to make a movie, mm -hmm. uh, a new Robocop. He, uh, his idea was uh, to, to tell this story by using the, the concept of Robocop. Mm -hmm. And I love that his background, he studies as a physicist. Yeah. I think that made all of the terminology and everything just feel, again, more grounded. Yeah, and also the way that he, uh, because he had such insight in, in, this, in this field, um, the, to make the, the 14 years in the future plausible, uh, he was you know, the, the best gauge for that. Mm -hmm. So there are so many themes present in this film about you know, consumerism and politics and technology and all of that. What were some of your favorite themes to play out? Um, well, from, I mean, the, the fav, my fav, the favorite uh, themes for me personally mm -hmm. that are that's the uh, emotional journey that that Alex Murphy goes through and 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 to sort of portray the uh, the arc of, of that character. Um, when I watch the movie and and just for me intellectually to think about the project I'm, I'm doing, it's um, it's how the, the dangers of um, the automation of, of violence and the automation of legal violence has a direct correlation with fascism and, 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 and how, that, um, how we could, in a pop cultural way, sort of bring a little light to that. Absolutely. Well, we cannot wait to have it on our screens. And thank you so much for speaking with me. Cool. Thank you. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to AMC Movie News on YouTube. It's free and a great way to stay updated with all the latest movie news and check out our daily show, AMC Movie Talk. Also, don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Twitter to stay in the loop for our special prizes, giveaways, and contests.